Hey everyone, my name is Tommy Reynolds and this is what was in my camera bag when I went to India. So I've been getting a lot of requests asking me exactly what gear did you take, what lighting did you take, what lens did you use and all of that good stuff. So this is what this video is about. So let's jump straight into it, into what was in my camera bag. So the bag itself was a low pro flip side 400. I recently just up, um, got another one. So I was using one for, um, for years and now I've just got a new one. And uh, <laughs> when I got my first one, um, it comes with these uh, these things here, so you can clip it around your waist so to take extra support. And um, when I first got it years ago, I actually cut them off straight away because I thought they don't look cool. That, that's not that's not a cool thing. About a week or so before I went to uh, India, I was having lots of treatments on my neck and on my back because uh, where I've been carrying this for so many years, I'm starting to get a few neck problems, so I'm having to see an osteopath. So I bought this bag again, and this time I'm going to leave these things on here so that I can take some of the strain off of my shoulders. But, but apart from that, yeah. The way I was able to capture all of my video content is having a GoPro. And if you wondered how I got that shot, I had a little monopod that was strapped to, this is why I love, love this. It's got a, it's a tripod holder. So I've put the monopod into the holder here and then I've clipped it at the top here again. And this uh, GoPro films the back of my head so that, and that's how you're able to see uh, most of the shots that you see in my India video. So that was filmed with that. It's great because I can just hit record and forget that it's recording and then you end up with some really, really cool stuff uh, because you forgot it was recording the whole time. That's the GoPro out of the way. Inside the bag itself, I didn't um, take all of my lenses with me on this trip. Um, for this kind of trip and for any trip where I go abroad to take photos, weight is key. Um, I only take the necessities because every little bit of weight counts when you're going abroad uh, and you're trying to, um, you know, you've got, you, you've got a baggage allowance, you've got a hold allowance, you've got to make sure that you, uh, you're not taking too much gear. And also you don't want to be carting too much gear on your back if you've got a bad, uh, if you're starting to get a bad neck like I am, where you have to see the osteopath um, quite often now. You don't want to be carrying gear that you don't need. So in this bag is exactly what I took to India. Um, and you probably would have seen glimpses of it at the start of my India video. So first of all, hard drive. Probably the most important thing to take. You know, um, this is where all of the images are stored and then I would then upload them to Dropbox um, at the hotel. You know, without, without your images, it's nothing, you know. Um, so that is the most important thing. I always like to put my name, uh, my contact details on that just to make sure if it ever does get lost, it can be found. And uh, you might have noticed that I have these stickers on pretty much all pieces of my gear. It's like a QR code, so if you scan it, it goes straight to my details again. The camera itself, is I use a Canon 5D Mark III. Um, I've used the Mark III for years now. I used the Mark II before and I've upgraded since to the Mark III. Absolutely superb camera. Um, I absolutely love it. This is the camera I use uh, and I only use one body. Didn't take the battery grip with me. Didn't want to take any uh, anything that I don't necessarily need. If I had to do it, I can cope with shooting it that way. This is the 16 to 35 millimeter f2.8 Canon L lens. I absolutely love this lens. Love, love, love this lens. I've had this for years now. Um, when I started working at Jessup's, which is a big camera uh, chain here, uh, the first thing I uh, bought, one of the first things I bought was this lens. And it's a great, fantastic wide angle lens. 2.8, nice and shallow, um, all the way to 16 mil. I used it for a good percentage of the shots that I took in India and it's just a great landscape lens so highly recommend uh, that that lens great lens the this is my newest lens this is the Sigma 35 mm f1.4 art series lens oh I can't tell you how good this lens is I honestly can't I th this surpassed my expectations I knew this would be good but I didn't know it'd be this good um, this is the sharpest lens I've ever used um, when it's shot wide open. So at f1.4, this is so sharp. Really, really good lens. Um, I used it for, I think I ended up using this for most of my images on this India trip. 
Um, primes, as you probably know, uh, are sharper than zoom lenses, and I've got the 1.4 range if I needed it. I don't think I ended up going any uh, shallower than f2. 35mm is a nice focal length for me as well. It's just not too wide, not too close in. Um, so for me, it, it's like a sweet spot for my kind of work that I was doing in India. So 35mm is definitely one of my better lenses to use. I also took with me the 50mm f1.4 lens. It's not their L lens. I, to be honest, don't see the point in upgrading and getting the 1.2. For the price difference, for me, it's not worth it. I can get really nice images with a 1.4 lens compared to a 1.2 L lens. So this for me is good enough and I got still got quite a few shots using the 1.4 uh, this lens. I, uh, a couple of images are flagging up right now that you can see that I shot with the 50 mil. So really, really love this lens. I've had it for years. It's a great go-to portrait lens. You can also get the 1.8, which I used for years when I started photography. Use the 50mm 1.8. I shot a short film at university using the 1.8 lens. Absolutely nothing wrong with that lens. It's really, really good. The Nifty 50 is worth every single penny. I think it's like £100, if that now. It's really, really cool. Um, but this is the 1.4 version. So that's the camera that I used and those were the lenses that I used. Uh, the other big thing, uh, the biggest thing about this trip is lighting. As I always like to say, lighting is worth so much more than, than the camera you're using and the lenses you're using. It doesn't, it doesn't matter about that. What does matter is the lighting. As I say in previous posts, it doesn't matter if you have a 1500 pounds or 2000 pound lens. If the lighting is rubbish, it's rubbish. Last year I went to Sri Lanka and I took a small softbox with me and I took a flash gun, the 40 pound Yongyu flash gun with me, which was fine. I ended up getting some nice shots and uh, did, so, did uh, created an exhibition out of it. But this time I wanted to up my game and I thought how can I improve the light, the light quality this time around? How can I better that? So I wanted to improve every single aspect of my lighting uh, setup. So for that, I updated, I upgraded the flash. So instead of using a flash gun, I was using a hybrid system. So I was using the Pixapro Hybrid 360. Um, there's a bit, there's bits of tape on it, and you probably would have noticed that I had bits of tape on all of my gear in the video. And uh, people have asked me, why have you got tape all over your gear? What, what are you doing? But the reason I do that is because I'm purposely making the making the 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 cam the gear look not that great. I'm I'm purposely making it look a bit a bit tacky and a bit rubbish. I'm making it look beat up basically, so, so that it will detract people from stealing it. So I cover the logos and uh, uh, just loosely putting it around your lenses makes it look like it's been beaten up a lot and it's probably not worth a lot. So that's actually why I cover it with tape, but. So this is the Hybrid 360 um, ETTL by Pixapro. So as the name suggests, the hybrid means that it's a hybrid between a flash gun and a studio strobe. So um, it's got gr it, huge amounts of power. So I thought, if I'm gonna be photographing in, in daylight, I'm gonna need something that's gonna pump out a lot more power because it, uh, I struggled in Sri Lanka during the middle of the day and I wanted to shoot at full power, uh, I wanted to shoot with my flash and underexpose the sky. It was very difficult for me because even at full power, the flash was still, it was still hard for the flash to over, to under, it was still hard to overpower the sky at full power. So I was, I wanted this time around to have a much uh, better system. So this pumps out a lot more power, so I would highly recommend this. And uh, the only thing is this does have to be powered by an external battery source, but this is great. I think you can get about um, 450 shots at full power. I never even used this at full power. This was so good. It's like a, sh it's like a, a flash gun on steroids. Um, but this is also ETTL as well. So if I wanted to, I could take this in auto flash and it would find the exposure for me like that as well. So that's a great, great feature. But another reason I wanted to upgrade this is because in Sri Lanka, I didn't have the ability to shoot in uh, high speed sync mode. I had to, I was restrict, restricted to shooting in my flash sync speed. So which meant that some of the time I was having to open up to about f4, f5.6. I wanted to stop down to like f2, um, but I wasn't able to do that because of the uh, because of the sh uh, the my flash sync speed. That's why I use the Pixapro um, triggers as well. This is their STI3 TTL 
TC triggers. I know that's a mouthful, I'll leave the description in the below of all the gear that you're seeing here. But what's great about these triggers is they support high speed sync and they have a great range on them as well. It's able to transmit that TTL information as well so I can, if I wanted to, uh, I, could, I could send over the TTL information wirelessly um, as well as using high speed sync. Another reason that makes these triggers even more impressive is that you can uh, change the channel, change the group, you can have multiple uh, multiple flashes firing at the same time on different, different powers. You can set all the power from here. This was another uh, good thing about um, compared to my Sri Lanka trip. In Sri Lanka, I was using a very, very cheap trigger system. Uh, didn't allow me to adjust the power output of the flash from my camera. I would have to physically walk over to the flash and change the power myself and then walk back and then take the photo. So this kind of, in Sri Lanka, this broke up the flow a bit. Um, so this is why it was really nice. If I wanted to change the power, I could simply do it myself without having to ask my friend Brendan, who was acting as my voice activated light stand in India. I didn't have to ask him to change it. Um, and having Brendan um, with me was so, so great. Um, if you're ever going on any trips like this um, and you wanna take a big flash and a softbox with you, then uh, if you can get an assistant, it's, um, it'll, it'll make your job so much, so much easier. Having Brendan there was great because um, I could just concentrate on photographing my subjects. I didn't have to worry about what, uh, what the flash was doing or whether it was gonna blow over more importantly. So that was another reason why I wanted to take this because I knew that I was gonna be having some assistance with me. So I knew that, um, I knew that Brendan was gonna be able to hold the battery pack um, if I was going on my own. I probably wouldn't have opted for this system because um, because of the battery pack, I didn't want to leave that on the light stand in case it all blows over, there's more risk of it blowing over. So have, so because uh, I had someone coming with me, that was another reason why I opted for this. And another big reason I opted for this is because all of this fits in my camera bag. And if I was going abroad, I want everything in my camera bag if I'm, if it's, uh, if, uh, if I'm going on an airplane. I don't want anything going in in the, in the hold luggage uh, because I don't want to risk anything breaking. So this is great because I can have a complete lighting system and my camera gear all in one spot. And the only thing that I did put in the hold um, were the monopod that Brendan was holding and the softbox itself. Because the softbox, it's not really that fragile, you know, it's just, it's, it's not like a camera or a, or a flash, you know. I was okay putting that in the hold. It, there was no way I could bring that on with me. So uh, moving on, I can show you the exact softbox that I also was using as well for every single shot. So this is the Pixapro 90 centimeter easy open softbox. When I was in Sri Lanka, I was using a, I think it was, uh, it was about 60 centimeter softbox. With the other softbox that I used in Sri Lanka, it had an outer diffusion panel. This has an inner and outer diffusion panel, making this even softerer, softerer, more softer at work. But let me quickly show you what it, what it looks like when it's open. Okay, so this is the softbox. Um, as you can see, it's a, it's, it's a decent, decent size. So I usually use a um, 150 centimeter softbox in the studio. Uh, so this one's a 90 centimeter one. So I physically couldn't have fit a bigger one in my hold luggage. This, so this, lay, this, this laid uh, diagonally in my hold luggage and I had to put my clothes in between either side of it. And the fact that this is an easy open softbox made it very easy to in, uh, after shooting to pack it away and then move on to the next thing. So this was uh, definitely a great softbox. I've used softboxes in the past where you have to put the rods in manually and it just takes forever. And this would have been so inconvenient in India if I had to do this every single time. So um, having the easy open softbox is great because it just opens up like an umbrella and then it collapses as you would expect as well. So this made it really easy to just pack away, slip in the bag, and then we're able to move on to the next bit. As you can see in the front, it's got the inner diffusion panel here, and then the outer diffusion just then connects, just Velcro all the way along the edge. And I think that is about it. That's all the gear, that was everything I took to Sri Lanka, uh, Sri Lanka, India. Um, one thing I will say is if you are thinking of doing something like this, I said it at the end of my India, India vlog, but um, again, get yourself a guide. If you're gonna do this, get yourself a guide because they will help you. They know all the hot, spot, hot spots. They know the best places to go, the best place to photograph. 
So that would be my number one tip um, if you're going to try this. Um, and that's about it from me. Uh, if you like this video, please make sure you hit that like and share button or subscribe if you are watching this on YouTube. And as, as always, I will see you again next time. Bye-bye.